The lymphatic system is a very, very important part of the circulation, even though most people don't know it's there. Every time the blood travels around the circuit that it has to travel through to provide oxygen to the tissues, 1% of the water in the blood ends up in the tissues and cannot get back into the blood circulation. And it's the job of the lymphatic system to take that fluid back to the heart. And in so doing, it also helps the immune system to filter information that's coming from the tissues because all of that travels through that water that's going back to the blood. So lymph node evaluation and whether the lymph nodes are involved with cancer is still an important component of what is done as part of our diagnostic and surgical procedures. We have also streamlined how we remove lymph nodes to stage tumors. And over the last decade and a half, we've made great strides to be conservative in the sense of only removing a few lymph nodes for the vast majority of patients. And we have ways of identifying uh, the most informative lymph nodes which we call the sentinel nodes. Patients are often injected with a uh, radio tracer. Our technique that we use here at Stanford is injecting one little place around the areola. Much like one might toss a leaf into a stream, it will float through channels in the breast up to the lymph nodes and lodge in the same place that the tumor cells might lodge. That doesn't mean they're guilty of having tumor, that just means they're suspects. So they need to be removed at surgery Sometimes they'll be evaluated in the operating room and that will help provide information for the surgeon as to how many lymph nodes need to be removed. If one finds multiple lymph nodes involved, then maybe one does need the more involved lymph node dissection. The technique of sentinel lymph node biopsy has really advanced over the years to basically be as minimally invasive as possible, but by nature of, of removing the lymph nodes themselves and also surgery, the dissection in the area can cause injury to the lymphatic channels that's there, that are in that area as well as the, the fact of removing the extra lymph nodes can decrease the drainage system in that area and can cause in some patients lymphedema long term. There is an observed rate of two to six percent chance of patients in general who get biopsies of their lymph nodes for breast cancer treatment or any kind of cancer treatment. There are going to be individuals who, no matter what we do, lymphedema might develop. Lymphedema, it's swelling of part of the body or many parts of the body because the lymphatic channels are sluggish in their activity or perhaps they're obstructed or in some way damaged so that they cannot carry the fluid at a normal rate but there is a gray zone for many of these patients where using good preventive strategies will reduce risk and maybe even eliminate the risk for those individuals. The most important strategy is to recognize it and recognize the signs of it as early as possible. The earlier we intervene with treatment, the more chance we have to return the arm toward normal or perhaps even to normal. The longer the lymphedema sits untreated, the more profound the problem becomes. So the most important element is to be aware that even minor injury to the skin in the part of the body that is at risk for the breast cancer patients, that means scrapes, cuts, burns, sunburn, kitchen accidents, as well as anything that doctors may do that will injure the skin, such as blood draws, intravenous lines, blood pressure cuffs that are left on for prolonged periods of time. So people who know themselves to be at risk should be monitoring themselves for any minor signs of swelling, signs of discomfort in the limb, heaviness, mild pain. These all can be evidence that lymphedema is already beginning to become established. And a healthcare professional can then look at the arm and determine if in fact that's likely. And at that early stage, we may need to do nothing more than give a compression garment to try to prevent that process from getting worse. If the arm really becomes very enlarged with fluid, then it requires the work of a lymphedema therapist to clear that extra fluid and get the limb back down to a more normal size. They start by doing a special massage technique called lymphatic uh, manual drainage or manual lymphatic drainage or manual therapy 
variety of terms. But the basic idea is that with a very light but specialized touch on the skin, the lymphatic capillaries will fill with fluid and carry the fluid out of the arm. They will progress to part two, which is called multi-layer bandaging. And there the therapist uses what's called a short stretch bandage, makes the lymphatic contraction amplify and moves much more fluid that way. So the lymphedema therapist will treat the patient over perhaps two or three or four weeks, many times per week, always reapplying that bandaging material to try to get the arm down as small as it can get, hopefully to normal, at which time the compression garment can be used, put into place so that the uh, fluid doesn't reaccumulate. Well, at the moment, there are no approved medications for lymphedema, so there are surgeries as well. So in patients who present with early stage lymphedema are good candidates for a procedure called lymphovenous bypass procedure. What that means is that we would identify a working lymphatic channel that is obstructed and then rerouting it into a working uh, vein that is nearby, so allowing the lymph fluid to drain. Lymph node transfer is a great option for patients who progressed a little bit beyond the early stage. So we take these tissue and then we transfer them into the affected limb, whether it's an arm or a leg, and then reconnect the blood vessels. So these become living tissue immediately, and by nature of being living tissue, um, they will release growth factors and they will drain the lymph fluid in the affected limb immediately. We understand that lymphedema is a very challenging condition that affects patients' quality of life and function. And here at Stanford, we're committed to doing everything that we can and offer patients both non-surgical as well as surgical treatment options to help address the, the disease process so that they can improve the quality of life and function. We want to understand everything we can about this system, both the way in which we can marshal its power to control cancer, as well as our ability to marshal its ability to remain healthy. And I think finally we're making some progress and the years to come I think are gonna be very promising, both for the cancer survivor as well as for people who are worried about or have lymphedema.